I'm gonna be going on a tempo run, which I'll be doing in a couple of hours. Before we get to that, I just wanted to show you a couple of things which I've got around the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, and it's the Kenya Olympic kit, along with the Nike Vaporfly Next% 2 in the Tokyo 2020 Rodacious colorway so just get straight into looking at their shoes i'm not going to go into the technical spec so you can check that out in the upper right hand corner where i give a, a thoughts on whether it was an upgrade or a downgrade i think since that video my thoughts did change as i wore them a little bit more just in the fact that i felt they were a little bit more similar path to the version one without further ado let's get straight into the shoes big orange box and we're going to open them up and straight away the first thing you see is that huge pop of color. They are a very, very good looking shoe. I'm a big fan of white shoes. I never used to be just because of the fact that they got so dirty, but I think definitely with this mesh upper and this engineered mesh upper, you're going to get a huge pop of color when it's a nice sunny day. So. Just a quick overview, this is the Vaporfly Next% 2, if you don't know, slightly different from version 1, you've got an engineered mesh and this is the only huge change that is on the shoe, the midsole and going lower is all unchanged, you still get the same rubber grip, you still get the same ZoomX foam, you still get the same offset, the same stack height and exactly the same details in terms of the performance of the shoe. With the upper open fit around the back, you still got the heel counter, which has the sort of foam rail, which hugs against the back of your ankle. That's, that's just a bit of added feature in terms of aesthetical purposes. You've got a swoosh on that side. They've changed the laces from the original flat laces to the Alpha Fly laces. So these are the ones which have the little ribs, which kind of do grip better. I do find they do actually grip better. The lacing has remained the same in its asymmetrical position. They've also filled out the holes where the eyelets sit which cover in plastic, whereas version one has them slightly cut out. And there is slightly more room in the toe box, which should give anyone who's got a wider foot and slightly bigger toes just more room to breathe, which was probably one of the biggest criticisms of the version one shoe, that it just felt that it was just too snug. And, but if I'm totally honest, that's something that I actually prefer. I prefer that extra snug fit. Again, the colorway, you got a nice pop of crimson red at the bottom and you've got that hot pink which goes in to the upper. These are, these are probably two of my favorite colors on a Nike shoe. I think they really stand out, they look great. On the midsole, you've got that slight outline of that swoosh. And other than that, the shoe is pretty much what you expect it to be. The fit is true. I've gone true to size in this, eight and a half as my usual size. And again, for me, I will predominantly be using these for any speed sessions, long tempo sessions, maybe some track sessions of lighter ones and definitely for the race day experience. You know what to expect, it's an aggressive, firm fitting shoe. I think ZoomX is probably the most aggressive out of the super shoes out there. Some people don't like the fact that it's quite narrow in the midfoot. I mean, personally for me, I've always felt, I do have one pair which always ache my feet. It's the Valerian blue pair. I'm not sure what's different in them, but they always ache my feet. So I tend to have to loosen them just a tiny bit. But so with the Tokyo 2020 kit for the Kenya national team, I have got the socks, which are just a pair of cushioned Nike socks with the Kenya branding on the back. They are a crew length sock. They are fairly cushioned. I'd say these are probably more on the elite cushion side and not the lightweight ones, not at all. These are far from lightweight. So these are definitely gonna feel a lot nicer in the winter time. But also if you prefer an elite cushion sock, then these are definitely ones for you. Again, I've gone with a size three in these, which is a UK seven to eight. These are a medium. Along with the socks, I picked up the half tights, and these are this is a, these are quite nice in terms of half tights. They look really good. The finish and just generally how they actually look in terms of the pattern, and also I think these fit more snug than the 2021 version of the kit. They do have a brief liner internally, but unfortunately. They don't actually have any pockets at all. There are no pockets, not at all, not even for a small coin or a key, which is a huge disappointment. The vent inside feels slightly different. It feels a lot more closer to what you get on a pair of split shorts. It does actually say that it's a fly vent as opposed to any other material. But again, I think these fit a lot more snugger than any other pair that I have. And definitely something which I'll wear going forward, probably not on the days when I need to carry gels because there's literally nothing and I'm not too keen on actually carrying a waistband or a waist pack to 
carry stuff with me so yeah unfortunately there is no key on here which is the biggest disappointment but I managed to get these both at 30% off which isn't too bad so that's the singlet in the Kenya branding again this is a Nike Aeroswift singlet it is labeled on the website as Nike Aeroswift ADV and again it fits a very slim fit which is the same size as all my other Nike Aeroswift singlets. Again, it's a slim fit, slim cut. So if you like that tailored, then pick up the true to size of what you are. If not, then definitely size up again. But it also has a huge pop of colour, which is something which I really, really like. I think it's quite unique, quite different. I've never owned an international singlet. I wish it said Team GB, but unfortunately it doesn't. And paired with the tights, they do look really, really nice together. Definitely a racing kit for sure. Definitely one to train in. I will definitely be training in them. But for now, let's get on to that tempo run. is done shoes are pretty good I think from the first time that I tried them in terms of the comfort and the fit that I got I was able to achieve the lockdown much much better and I think they look pretty great especially in with the white socks as well I think they look fantastic they're wearing pretty good no hot spots and never had to loosen them or tighten them again and I think it was a good way for me to break them in I did 18 and a half K 10 at which was at a tempo of around 558 or so per mile but I mainly ran on heart rate today so put some data up on the screen in terms of what I ran and I'll obviously break down how that was but I'm going to go in and recover cool down and stretch and then get into the shower because I am very very sticky let's break down the run so it was a tempo run which was a few kilometers warm up and then it was a set of five times two kilometers at my tempo pace 0.5 or 500 meter float recovery which is a jog recovery and then followed by a cool down back home so the idea let's go straight into the data and as you can see from the heart rate and the pacing it was essentially what i did was i set up on my watch as a workout for all the 2k splits to be at a zone four target because I was feeling a little bit ropey in the day, uh, stomach was feeling a little bit dodgy, a little bit in knots. So I just wanted to take away what I thought was the pace range just in case I was going to not hit the pace. And I was hoping that the heart rate would result in an area which I would expect it to be under six minute mileage. And in terms of like the overlay between the heart rate, it was it was pretty close to what I expected it to be. The heart rate was sat nicely and evenly, um, just around 165 for the actual duration of each of each segment of the two of the two Ks. And the limit on zone four is set up to be just under 172 beats for the end of zone four so i was comfortably under for most of them slightly over on the latter stages of the 2k reps which is fine it was i was pushing and i was working hard but i wasn't overworking which is what a tempo run should be so it was a hugely encouraging workout my stride length was good and my balance was 50 50 for all of it which is really good especially with the glute issue that i've been having it resulted in that my balance was evenly split between my left and right leg as well at the same time Good vertical oscillation, 8.9, nice average ratio of six, and obviously my cadence was in a nice area as well. And the floats, I just jogged. And they were slightly over five minutes per K, uh, just an average of nine minutes per mile, which is around 5.30ish pace, uh, which is just a couple of K under from what I was running. And then a nice cool down back home. So yeah, the purpose of this was to spend time in that lactate threshold area, push that lactate threshold, which is essentially going to work really well for this half marathon, as well as the marathon target, which is the long term goal. So really good workout. I highly recommend this workout. Um, if you are feeling a little bit, a little bit ropey, or you just feel as if that you want to take pace out, I do recommend sometimes running to heart rate. I wear a heart rate strap across my chest, and sometimes it's nice to run with that. I do have the heart rate data on the screen just so I stay within the the range um, and it was quite surprising from what I felt during the run and yeah that 
is the data. And until next time, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Uh, make sure you hit the like button so it gets the video out to many people. And I will catch you in the next video. Peace out.